the reference needle problem is used to estimate pi. The problem looks like it can be solved by simply using probability, but because of the infinite amount of outcomes we have to use, we have to use calculus. There are too many ways the needle could land on the floor for us to use probability. Looking at a single part of the floor, two inches apart, every needle is going to fall between the cracks or on one of the cracks. Using the midpoint and the variable x for the distance from the midpoint to the line will not be enough information to give us all the possible outcomes. We also need to consider the angle from the needle to and the line from the midpoint on to the crack. This gives us all the outcomes the needle can land on the floor. Finding the probability of one board gives us the possible outcomes of the entire floor because every outcome can be solved with those coordinates. Now we need to find what conditions make the needle land on a crack. X has to be between 0 and 1. Theta can only be from 0 to 90 degrees or 2 pi. X has to be less than cosine theta in order for the needle to cross the crack. Next, to find probability, we need to find the amount of outcomes which we can do so by looking at the graph <coughs> of cosine theta. X ranges from 0 to 1, and theta ranges from 0 to pi over 2. It seems that it would be enough to take the area from the boundaries of just um, X going from 0 to 1 or zero to and theta going from 0 to pi over 2. But we also have to include the graph of cosine theta the, va the x value has to be smaller than the cosine theta graph. To find the probability, we have to take the area under the curve, the green, the shaded green area right here. Finding a continuous method to calculate the probability, we do so by taking the limit as n approaches infinity and standing for the times we threw in the on the floor and K stands for how many of those needles landed on a crack. So pi can be estimated by pi equals 2n over k. Um, so we find the probability by taking the integral of the cos cosine theta graph, which is right here, and then we take it from 0 to pi over 2, which is shown right here and divided by pi over 2 because of the boundaries. And to evaluate it, it ends up being, to take the integral, it's negative sine theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 2 divided by pi over 2, which ends up being 1 over pi over 2, which gives us 2 over pi. So <coughs> to find a probability, you would need to take the number of times something happens over the number of total times that you've done the event. So to take the probability that we found equals 2 over pi, you have to take the number of times the needle falls on the line, which is k, and divide that by n. And so since that's the probability, we can set that equal to 2 over pi. So n as it approach, the limit as n approaches infinity of k over n, it can be set equal to 2 over pi. So therefore, pi can be estimated by the equation pi equals 2n over k. Yeah, yeah, and that's how Buffin decided to estimate pi throughout this entire thing, by doing all of this and then this.